Hey everyone, welcome to this new video. In this one, we'll be looking at how you can create this animation inside Unreal Engine using the new motion design tools. We'll be looking at how to use effectors, how to light the shots, and how to set up your camera. Uh, before we move on, uh, I would really appreciate if you guys subscribe to the channel and like my content. It really helps me to make more content and share whatever I learn. So without further ado, let's dive in. Alright, so when you are in Unreal Engine, just make sure you go to Edit, Plugins and type in Motion Graphics, Motion Design. And so make sure you have Motion Design plugin checked. So it will have all the tools needed and you just need to restart the engine and you should have all the tools for Motion Design. All right, once the engine has restarted, you can go into um, this tab over here and click Motion Design. It will create all the necessary um, tools you need for it. And the very first thing I'll do is actually set this to our cinematic viewport. And this would be our default viewport, which would be used to control all the assets needed. We can go ahead and bring in our assets. All right, so let's create some folders to keep things organized. I'll right click, say new folder. Let's call this assets. And then I will create a sequence folder and then I'll create a level folder. And let's also create a material folder. All right, so next we'll start bringing in our assets. We'll right click, say import game assets. And I have all these key cap um, model, which I downloaded from the internet. I will link in the description um, where you can find these models. So we're just gonna click on the first one and the second one and say open, and it will give it this pop-up. We'll say import all, and then the engine will start importing all those meshes. So let's also bring in our textures. So I'm gonna right click, say, import game and I have all this texture set over here which I'm just gonna bring it all right then let's go into our content um, we'll go to the asset we bought in and then there's a material instance in their keycaps so if you open that we can start assigning some textures to it so we'll go to content again we'll go to our material folder and the very first thing I need is the base color and Actually, I just need two things from here, the base color and the roughness, and that should do it. Now let's plug in our base color to base color, and then the roughness will go into the roughness. And that's all pretty much for the material. We'll just save that. So those that material would get assigned to all the assets uh, currently we have in our content manager. All right, so the first shot we'll be trying to recreate is this guy over here. Um, we will populate the MoGraph with all these keycaps and just do a general wave effector uh, effect in there. So let's uh, dive into it and see how we can create this one. So I'm going to be using a cloner actor over here. So we'll just drop that in into our scene. So that creates a cube over here. All right, let's fix the orientation on this. We'll click on that and then let's say zero. And now we need to replace these cubes with our keycaps. So we can just drag in and drop that into our cloner actor. So it will replace those keys. Um, the scale is pretty off. So let's do that 0.2. And you can see we have started replacing those cubes with our keycaps. So let's just do that for all of it. I will just fight fast forward this section. All right, let's also delete the, the cube we have in there. So we'll select the default cube, press delete and delete that. Uh, you can see we have um, we have our keycaps, but uh, we want them more laid out, right? So I'm just going to select the cloner actor and then you have a bunch of options over here. So first what we want to do is reduce this Z. So I just want two rows and I want to increase the X count. So let's go for 30 and 30. So now we have uh, a more laid out pattern right, like this, uh, but you can see there's a repeated pattern in there. So what we want to do is randomize the keycaps of how they are being placed inside this actor. So we'll go into our mesh render mode and then select random. So now you can see it is more randomized now. Uh, they're also kind of sticking to each other. So let's increase the spacing between them. So we have this X parameter over here, which you can change. And I think I just need a little bit more in Y and a little bit more in X, just like that. We'll tweak them further of how, our how we set up our camera and lighting. But for now, it's good. Okay, let's start creating our effector. We're gonna select the cloner. And then you have a button over here called spawn linked effector. It's very important for the effector to be linked to this cloner actor. And if you select the effector, 
we have a bunch of options over here so what you want to do is first change the uh, type to sphere to unbound because we want to affect the whole grid and then you have um, mode so let's change that to noise field so that unlocks a few parameters over here so first is the location which is like how high you want this wave to go so let's go that uh, 50 for now and as soon as we do that you can see we are affecting our grid um, by controlling this parameter you can increase how much um, how much height you want the waves to be in so for for now i think 50 is good um, next what we will do is um, we will change our pan so if you put one 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 in all of these uh, fields you can see we are now animating our waves so the pan is basically the speed so if i go back to the effector um, so if you increase that in x so if you say x10 it will go um, in higher speed in x so this is good for now um, what i would like to do is actually increase the because we are going for a really wide shot right so let's increase the number of actors right now so let's go into our cloner and i'll go 50 let's go 50 oops and 50 in y as well but that's the beauty of unreal right there's so much high density mesh and key uh, into this um, scene but still it's so responsive okay let's now set up our camera our outliner uh, place actor tab and drop in a cine camera actor and this viewport is gonna be my camera viewport so let's um, back it up a little bit and we're just gonna create a white shot over here something like that and I'll go into the camera and uh, you know I'll change a few things um, I want it to be a white shot so let's just do maybe 15 as a focal length and that's pretty much okay actually okay let's start with lighting so what we're gonna do is delete all the lights we have right now so I'm just gonna select all these stuff um, and say delete and also delete the atmospheric fog so now I'm starting with a blank scene right now let's drop in our HDRI backdrop so we'll go into place actors tab and I'll drop in an HDRI backdrop HDRI is a great place to start uh, your lighting with because it gives you a nice fill and you can then control the key key light however you want Alright, so I'll bring in my HDR, we'll right click and say import to game. And I have this art probe HDR over here, we're gonna bring them. So uh, you select your HDRA backdrop actor and then we're just gonna replace that HDR over there. It feels a little bright right now, so I'm gonna select my HDR and let's just reduce to 0.152. So we just want a little hint of the HDR, right? And then we're gonna add another light for um, our key. Uh, let's also try to, uh, rotating the HDRI, so we can select the HDRI backdrop and then start rotating in A so that we get a little bit of that window feel, right? So the light is coming through the window. The keycaps are going a little too high, so let's select the cloner actor and I'm just going to reduce, sorry, select the effector and I'm going to reduce that to let's say 30. That looks much better and I think there's the spacing uh, is a little too much. So we'll go into cloner and just reduce that spacing. So they are kind of like sticking a little bit more with each other, right? So we get a little bit more continuous feel of the waves. Well, let's drop in a key light. So we're just going to go to place actor and then we're going to drop in a rectangle light. Um, let's make it somewhere over there. Let's increase the attenuation so that it's affecting the entire grid. Let's increase the intensity on it. So we just get a little feel of um, a key light of some sort coming from that direction right and if you turn that off and on you can see that key light kind of makes a difference right and that's pretty much it for lighting and setting up the scene um, or to render this we'll click on this button over here say add level sequence and then we will name this uh, first shot Just save and it'll create a sequence and let's drive drag in our cine camera actor uh, we're not going to be animating the camera so we can just leave the way it is you can click on this uh, render movie button 
We'll click on this unsaid config and click on this preset button and then load our preset. I will link this preset in our in the description so you guys can download and it has all the console variables I normally use. Um, we'll select the uh, proper folder for this. So let's Unreal. Uh, so we are all set and now you can just hit uh, render local and it will start rendering. All right, next we will recreate this shot over here which is just a different application of the effector. So we're gonna be using the same grid. So we will just go into file and then current, save current level as, and I'm gonna call is um, the close up shot. So we will click our um, cloner actor and then go here and say spawn link effector. So we're gonna create another effector. And what we want to do is um, first we will increase um, the height of this, these waves. So let's select our first effector and let's go maybe 80. And then we will select our second effector and then change the type to unbound. And we will check on orientation force field enabled and that would um, uh, alter the orientation of these keycaps. The speed is a little too much right now. So what we can do is actually reduce the orientation force rate. So I'm just going to go 0.5. Also, we can see over here that our um, waves is going in as well. So we don't want that to be moving, right? So we're going to select our first effector and then make this pan zero so that it's just the orientation which is getting affected. Next, we will um, change few things in the camera. So we'll select the camera. So from a wide shot, I'm going to go to a nice portrait lens. So we're going to go 50 over there. And that will give us a nice depth of field. Make sure your aperture is low. So mine is at 0.72. I'm just going to move the camera and pick a interesting spot to focus on uh, with some foreground keycaps. Um, as well over there and we'll also make sure we have our focus right so i'm just gonna go into uh, my lens settings and then click on this sample focus button and make sure i'm sampling that area right okay let's light this shot so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna delete um, my hdri for this one i'm gonna be going in with a very high contrast shot so we're gonna i'm gonna delete the light um, the hdri backdrop and we're just gonna use the the area light we have and just play around with that right so let's bring it somewhere over there just want a nice focus area uh, this is this one this one is going to be a little smaller and let's increase the intensity for that i want my eyes to go at that area right so we're just gonna do something like that let's create some really high contrast area over there and maybe it's a little too much so let's reduce that so now we need a little bit more depth to the shot. So we're just going to press Alt and drag the slides. So we're going to create a copy of that. And let's uh, increase the adenation on this. So we can see a little bit more in the depth, something like that. And we're going to create another copy and then do same similar for the front. Uh, we just want a hint of it. We don't want too much, right? So it's OK if these, these ones are getting darker. Um, our attention is still going in, uh, on the middle one, right? You can play around with the light. You can change the intensity or, uh, you know, play around with different color of uh, different color temperature on the light and stuff like that. Um, that's that's a powerful aspect of working with Unreal Engine. You can iterate pretty fast on these stuff, right? All right, so yeah, that's how I created those shots in Unreal Engine using the motion design tools. I think it's really cool to have those real-time tools in Unreal now. Uh, if you like the video, please hit like, share, and subscribe. It really helps me and motivates me to create more content like this and share whatever I learn. So yeah, that was the video. I hope you liked it and see you in the next one. Cheers.